Hi there. I'm Clive Barnsley. Uh, I uh, wanted to talk to you all about these capos. Um, I have videos on uh, eBay. They're, I guess they're kind of long, and I don't know if people are seeing them because uh, I'm getting questions about what they can and can't do. Um, so I'm going to do a little demonstration. The key to using these things is that they have to wedge in the string tight enough. If they don't, they can pop off in the middle of a song. So that's the hitch, and that's why there's three sizes, because um, if, you, uh, <laughs> if you pop one off, then uh, you uh, need, no, you need the next size up uh, if you want to be sure. I use, um, this banjo is a, it has nigh gut strings and it's a fairly high action because of the way the bridge is made, a raised um, fifth string on the bridge. This does not have a particularly raised fifth string on the um, nut, it's, uh, yeah, on the nut end itself. It, uh, but I thought about putting one on actually, but right now it doesn't. Um, so I end up using mostly uh, the large size on this banjo, but this banjo is made, it's spread out and it's high and it's, for me that works out pretty good. It's actually a fairly, um, it's like a classical guitar is kind of the idea. And uh, if you have a banjo that's like that, you're going to want this large size. Um, now, and you can play things like uh, like that uh, Puccini piece that I was just playing, um, which I'm sort of butchering, but you know, I'm working on it. And now, uh, if you get into other instruments, um, th that's where you get into the different sizes. Now, I'm somewhat at a disadvantage because um, I don't have a master tone banjo or even a master clone type of thing to demonstrate for you. But I do have this tuba phone, and it's not exactly set up for bluegrass, but it's close enough, I think you'll agree. Uh, so, well, let's try that. lacking here, to be honest, uh, is um, a bluegrass player, because I, I ain't no more. I used to play bluegrass, but that was a long time ago, and when I pick it up and try to do it now, it's just trying to imitate something I did a long time ago, to be honest. But um, I do want to show you, because I think a lot of the questions people have is you know, steel strings, because I do a lot of demonstration with uh, uh, now I got strings and of course I invented these things for uh, now I got strings I'll explain that in a moment um, but uh, that said there is absolutely no problem with steel strings in these items at all and the small one is really intended for uh, steel string no it's too small for the uh, now on now I got string manages for the most part uh, so uh, yeah it works with the steel strings just fine. Here ain't no problem whatsoever. But my playing is another story. So I, let's see what I can do here a little bit for you. So you can get an idea. I'm going to play hard if I can. It probably won't be as fast as y'all play, but I'll play hard. Steel string uh, banjo. 
same thing. There is no problem. Uh, I'm going to move this up. Actually, I'm going to switch. That was a small size. That's absolutely the uh, smallest setting. It was on the first setting of the smallest size, which will work. The small size will work mostly on most bluegrass banjos, I think. But I tend to recommend people get sets, at least the small and medium. And if you've got nylon string banjos too, you're gonna, you might need the large. Uh, so that's what I tend to, they're cheaper if you buy the set too. Um, so I'm gonna put it on the third uh, fret here. And go ahead and go right into the second setting. This, this banjo has a raised uh, fifth string nut and a raised fifth string uh, bridge. So that does bring it up a little bit, um, but it's not that much. It doesn't seem to make that much difference. But at any rate, they gotta be squeezed in there or it won't work. If they are, they won't come off. I'm going to call this video, they work. <laughs> uh, yeah, one other thing I wanted to bring up, and I'll do that in a moment. So I wanted to say, uh, I got nothing against, uh, you know, the traditional ways of doing fifth string uh, capo uh, at all. My um, uh, Vega banjo, uh, the uh, tubophone, that has spikes in the neck and I have used them. I tend to use these things because I'm used to using them now. Sometimes I forget the spikes are there, but, uh, but it does have them. But when I came up to uh, working with this banjo, this is a this is an SS Stewart uh, Universal favorite and it's really old and it's pretty much original. It's got, it's some, got some accessories that aren't original, but the instrument itself is, you know, and it's in good shape. Um, and is, this is made in 1885, so that's just a few years after S.S. Stewart started the business. It was him making this stuff, I'm pretty sure. So I'm, I find this a very valuable instrument, and I think it could be financially valuable. So I didn't want to put spikes in the neck because I was afraid it would lower the value. It's purely that. It was monetary. So um, I invented these things for that purpose. So the idea is to protect it. I had tried some other kind of clamp on various things uh, that didn't put holes or whatever, but uh, I scratched one banjo that way, and not this banjo, but another banjo that way, and I was worried that I could, that I'd scratch it. So the idea was to make something safe. So I consider them to be pretty darn safe. I mean, there's always some way you can hurt things, so I'm not going to say no matter what you do, but um, they're they, they don't scratch, they, they don't, and they don't have to have a padding that can come off, you know, because there's they're just one piece. It doesn't. It's not going to change. Um, and uh, but the idea is they wedge in, and if they're not wedged in, they can pop off. They still work, but in the middle of a song, it could pop off. So you have to make sure they're tight. And somewhat a good way to experiment with that, if you have the set, if you bought a couple of pieces, is um, four or three. <laughs> is uh, you deliberately or go ahead and put one that seems a little bit too loose and see if you can pop it off and kind of get an idea of what you can and can't do with that sort of thing. But if you have all three, you, you should be able to, just about any banjo, the action on that um, first one I was playing is uh, very high. I, I doubt people have anything that's got a higher action. The, the, the fifth string is deliberately quite high on that. Um, so, I mean, maybe there's one around that needs something even higher than this, but I haven't encountered anything. This is pretty high. Um, so, uh, anyway. 
so far as the do they work or not uh, thing is concerned, I mean, you know, they have a, a, I mean, I wouldn't be selling them, especially not with a no questions asked return policy unless, um, unless they work, <laughs> you know, that would, that wouldn't be too smart. Um, so, I mean, maybe I'm dumb, but I don't, uh, I hope not. Uh, anyway, um, I use them, I use them every day, so I know they work. Uh, it's just that, you know, I'm a uh, handicapped senior, and I just, it's just a little side income, it's just pocket change. I don't expect this to be a huge thing at all. There are many ways to do this fifth string cable thing, but this one, it's in your pocket and ain't expensive and I thought it was a pretty good idea. So anyway, have a good one.